a little bit bigger, probably no card, but use the front and the back. Um, yeah, put those all down and <clears throat> be able to use those uh, for any series. And that's kind of what, what I wanted to do is just kind of go through kind of one by one. Because some of them, some of them I put on there, say I'll use this, use the limit comparison test on this, or uh, use the test for divergence on this test, or but there'll be some where you have to have, you'll have to decide which test goes with which series. So that's kind of what we're going to hit upon today. Those are it, yeah, ten, ten little tests. All right, so how about we take a look at this one, number one. Two in factorial over in factorial squared. <coughs> so if I don't tell you what to use there, what's your thoughts on what you should use there? Well, this is what we got into on Friday, uh, last time. If we have factorials, that's usually, typically, which test? <laughs> That'd be ratio. Ratio, yeah. Ratio. <clears throat> ratio test. So maybe we should review that. The ratio test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the ratio test, there's three parts. Part number one, if the limit, and we are uh, absolute valuing all this, as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a sub n, if that's less than 1, then the series is absolutely converging. Series of the a sub n's is absolutely convergent. If it's greater than 1, that ratio then it's divergent. And if it's equal to 1, the third thing, then it's Inconclusive test is. All right, so that's the three things on the ratio test. <clears throat> so what we look at is this this ratio here, which this just means the a to the n plus one just means the n plus one term the term uh, with n replaced by n plus 1. All right, so this is our a sub n. And so I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Okay, well, that is... <coughs> Yeah, the bottom term is just a sub n. 2n factorial over n factorial squared. So this top, <coughs> the top just takes that and plugs in n plus 1. So it would be 2 times n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, so it would be n plus 1 factorial squared which <clears throat> one thing we can do to make it a little bit nicer is the absolute value of all that all those are positive aren't they since n starts at 1 this would be a positive that'd be a, so everything's positive so the absolute value what that absolute value usually does is it takes out the alternating series stuff so anyway, it gets rid of that. 
The other thing is, we talked about last time, is we're divided by a sub n, but a sub n is usually going to be a fraction. And so it's divided by this. So doesn't that mean times the reciprocal of that? So that would be, let's write it this way. And let's go ahead and distribute. That would be 2n plus 2 factorial over n plus 1 factorial squared. All right, <clears throat> so then, uh, yeah, the bottom is divided, so <clears throat> that means the reciprocal times, so the n factorial squared over 2n factorial. <clears throat> now, here's why we use this ratio test for that. Uh, <clears throat> as we talked about last time, 2n plus 2 factorial, what does n factorial mean? n factorial means... Well, let's start with 5. 5 factorial means 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's the countdown product, I call it. So n factorial starts at n, n minus 1, n minus 2. That's the way we could write that. What about 2n plus 2 factorial? Well, <clears throat> which is what we got there. Well, 2n plus 2 factorial, I could write that as sort of like this. The first term is 2n plus 2. Right? Then what would be the next term? It subtract 1. Yeah, 2n minus 1. And 2n minus 2? Uh, 2n plus 1, sorry. Yeah. The next one, 2n. Because I'm just subtracting 1 every time, right? and then so forth. Well, the thing of it is, right here starting with, isn't that 2n two, two factorial? 2n, then 2n minus 1. That'd be 2n factorial. Okay, so let's write that. 2n plus 2, then we're saying is 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, times the 2n factorial. And the reason we do that is because, you'll notice, on the bottom over here, I have 2n factorial right there. So those are going to cancel. All right. <clears throat> now what about this? Well, let's think about that. n plus 1 factorial squared. Is that what I got? That is what I got. Okay. All right. So n plus, well, let's say n plus 1. So n plus fa 1 factorial, we could do the same way. We could say that's n plus 1 times n factorial. Then i got to square it, which squaring that means I square both of these, right? So it'll be n plus 1 squared and n factorial squared. With me? Okay. <clears throat> well, again, canceling out the n plus, uh, I'm sorry, n factorial squareds. Leaves me with the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. That's all that's left on top, right? Just these two. And the bottom is n plus 1 squared. So that's why... This ratio test is a good one because it gets rid of, uh, usually the ratio test gets rid of all the factorial stuff. Now it's just a regular limit. How do I do that limit? Well, let's go ahead and multiply that out. Wouldn't that be the limit as n goes to infinity of 4n squared? See, 2n and 4n be 6n plus 2 n plus 1 squared, n plus 1, n plus 1 would be n squared plus 2n plus 1, which if we divide by n squared, top and bottom, it all works out well. You got the limit as n goes to infinity. 4, 6 over n, 2 over n squared, uh, 1, 2 over n, 1 over n squared, 
that's zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero, so it's four. Four. Right? So this limit is equal to four. So what is the ratio test? Where does that fall in? That's number two, isn't it? We've got greater than one, that limit. It's greater than one. So the series is divergent. All right, <clears throat> by the ratio test. So just remember a factorial use ratio test. All right. <clears throat> Okay, well, <clears throat> what about series? Negative 1, the n minus 1 over ln of n to the n. It is an alternating series, but but <clears throat> the thing of it is, we didn't have a whole lot where we had, notice here, I've got exponential, but I've also got n in the base, and we talked about one such as this last night too. That's if you have n in the base and in the power, that's root test. If you've got n in the base and then n to the, if the n was just on the outside as the power, that would be probably geometric, um, different things with the inside. But if it's on the inside and the outside, the n, the base and the power, that's root test. <clears throat> Well, what about the root test? Here it is. Remember the root test works about the same way as the ratio test. Number one, if, however, you look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of a sub n absolute valued. If that's less than one, then the series absolutely converges. Number two, if this limit of the nth root of the absolute value of n is greater than one, well, guess what? The series diverges, and it's inconclusive if it equals one. That's the root test <clears throat> in a nutshell. Okay? So, how does that work on this one? All right, well, <clears throat> we need to look at this limit. The limit of the nth root, limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. <clears throat> well, guess what? The absolute value part takes out the alternating part of this, alternating sign part of that. So this would just be, wouldn't it? Everything else is positive, so it would just be the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 1 over ln of n to the n. <clears throat> wouldn't it? Because the absolute value would take care of this top part because that's just the alternating signs, right? Everything will be positive, so there's no alternating. It's just one on top now. 
It's not one negative one. With me? Well, that's good because since I'm doing the nth root, that's where the beauty of the nth root test, the uh, root test comes in. We're doing the nth root. Well, the nth root of one is just one. The nth root of What's the nth root of ln of n to the nth? Well, the nth root of the ln of the nth root, <laughs> or the nth power, yeah, the, the root and the power cancel out. Just ln of n. So, we're in good shape. <clears throat> now, n goes to infinity. What do you got? 1 over infinity? Zero, that's zero, which is less than one. So by the root test, this series, negative one to the n minus one over ln of n to the n, lots of n's, is absolutely convergent. Yes, because remember, yeah, put absolutely convergent because remember, absolutely convergent is a little stronger than just convergent. It's absolutely convergent. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, that one, that one's a little tricky because yeah, you had the alternating series, but the, the really the key part was you have n to the n, and anytime you have n to the n power, Look to uh, look to the root test if you're having to decide which test to use. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So we got a few more. What about uh, negative one to the n minus one over two n minus one? Well, that being, what do you got there? Yeah, again, we have an alternating series, don't we? Well, if it's an alternating series, let's try the alternating series test. That's probably number one thing to try. If it's an alternating series and it's not, an nth power to an nth power, or an nth uh, something to the nth power. Yeah, that's going to be your uh, first thing to try would be alternating series test. The AST. For alternating series, makes sense. <coughs> okay. All right, so what were the, there were two things on it, right? <clears throat> Number one thing was, uh, first of all, B sub n, we call B sub n just the, the part without the alternating signs. So one over two n minus one. This whole thing would be A sub n, so the B sub n is just the, the part without the alternating signs, remember that. So the first part of the uh, alternating series test is comparing the <coughs> B sub n plus 1 to the B sub n. It needs to be decreasing, right? So we need less than this. We need the B sub n plus 1, which would be 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1, which would be 1 over 2n plus 2 minus 1. I think that's going to be an easy comparison, isn't it? Because that's 1 over 2n plus 1, less than 1 over 2n minus 1. Is that a check? That's true, isn't it? How do we know? Well, this is pretty easy. This, compared to that, wouldn't this denominator have to be bigger? Bigger denominator, right? So, that, yeah, that's an easy... <coughs> 
That's true. Because you have one over the bigger denominator compared to the one over the smaller denominator. Yeah, that's this is going to be the, the smaller of the two. So that's checked. What's the other part? Huh? It's got to equal zero. The limit of the B sub n's as n goes to infinity needs to equal zero. So we look at the limit of the B sub n, which is 1 over 2n minus 1. <coughs> uh, maybe do a little divide by n action here just to make it all totally clear. That's 1 over n. That's 2 minus 1 over n. That's 0 over 2 minus 0. That's 0. Check. So we've got decreasing terms. We've got limit of the B sub n to 0. Alternating series test says, yeah, this converges. 